Is Remedy for Dandruff just another product from a social media brand or is the product actually good? Hi, my name is Serena. I'm a bioengineer and trichologist in training who breaks down all things beauty so you can make the best decision when it comes to buying your products. But before we do any review or breakdown, let's see what the social media team has to say. It's finally here. Remedy for Dandruff. I've been working on this one for years. There has never been a dandruff shampoo like this. It takes the active ingredient salicylic acid and it combines it with supporting ingredients, ketoconazole and niacinamide, plus it's fragrance free. We've been working on this one for a long time. It's the biggest innovation in the dandruff space. Check it out at remedyskin.com. Now, why exactly is Dr. Shaw and the marketing team saying remedy for dandruff is revolutionary? It's just a dandruff shampoo, right? Now, not exactly, and I can explain why. Now, normally cosmetic products are not regulated by the FDA, which is why you see a lot of beauty startups actually starting out in like their basement or in a kitchen instead of going directly to a lab manufacturer, which is a lot more expensive. Now, starting from your kitchen isn't necessarily a bad thing, and I'll actually just a lot of beauty brands that started that way. But whether you're in the kitchen or in the lab, the FDA has requirements for labels that you have to follow. And some of them you probably already know. And this includes things like having an ingredients list, making sure that the product amount is on the bottle, and also making sure whatever marketing terms you say for the product or is on the physical product is actually correct. Now let me give you an example. Let's say you have a hair oil. The marketing for the hair oil might say it reduces frizz or it might make your hair really shiny. And those are things you could typically prove with different types of testing. And it also makes sense that a hair oil would have that because hair oils are conditioning products. Another example would be is if a hair product says that it will make your hair feel stronger rather than saying it will for sure make your hair stronger because it kind of protects the brand and also makes sure what the product does is true. Because what if someone uses a product and their hair actually doesn't get stronger? So adding the word feel puts less liability on a brand, but also kind of makes how the product works true. Now they can have some type of clinical tests that will actually prove that the hair gets stronger, but there are certain words in the cosmetic space that brands have to be really careful around. Now taking all of that into consideration, Remedy says the remedy for dandruff is an all-in-one medicated shampoo that delivers multi-product impact and a single targeted scalp treatment that helps improve flaking and itching by addressing the root cause of dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. Now there are a couple words in this that you wouldn't see in a product unless this is a clinically tested shampoo. The first couple words is improving flaking and itching but also addressing the root cause of dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. Any time there's any type of mention of a treatment for a condition in cosmetics has to go through FDA testing because it officially makes that cosmetic an over-the-counter drug. Drugs have to be registered and regulated by the FDA because they're treating a certain type of condition. Now what makes Remedy for Dandruff revolutionary is mostly because of two types of ingredients. First is the salicylic acid which exfoliates your scalp by dissolving bonds between dead skin cells, effectively moving the debris and flaking from dandruff. And the second ingredient is the ketoconazole, which dissolves cell membrane of fungi, which effectively treats dandruff. Because it affects the growth of malastasia and the yeast that are linked to your itching and flaking. If you want to learn more about how dandruff works, I have a video breaking down all things dandruff here. Now, ketoconazole and salicylic acid has never been in a single dandruff product, like, probably ever. You might be thinking these are really effective ingredients. I don't really understand why they haven't been in a single product. Well, there is actually a reason and it's because of something called the FDA monographs, which are published standards which outline the acceptable ingredients, doses, formulations, and labelings for over-the-counter drugs that are considered safe and effective without needing additional FDA approval. They act kind of like a recipe book that companies can follow to make certain types of drugs. Because if it is isn't in the monograph, you have to put in an application for basically declaring that the product is a new drug, which is a whole nother thing. I'm not an expert in FDA, but I took a couple of FDA classes when I was in college. But the gist is the more testing that you have to do for a product for the FDA, the more expensive it is and also the more time it's going to take so that you can release the product. And most businesses are going to want to release the product as soon as possible because that's what's going to make them money. Because dangerous shampoos are technically over-the-counter drugs, there is a monograph called Drug Products for Control of Dandruff, Seborrheic Dermatitis, and Psoriasis Over-the-Counter Human Use. And the Remedy Shampoo falls under this monograph because they say they treat dandruff and seborrheic.
algebraic dermatitis. So the first part of the monograph, you basically get definitions of the different conditions that this monograph is basically four. Now the first definition that is important for us is dandruff. And the FDA says that dandruff is a condition involving increased rate of shedding of dead epidermal cells of the scalp. Also, seborrheic dermatitis, a condition of the scalp or body characterized by irritation, itching, redness, or excess shedding of dead epidermal cells. Now that we know the definitions of the specific conditions Remedy is trying to treat, the next important thing in the monograph is what ingredients and what concentration of ingredients can brands use to treat these conditions. We can see that coal tar can be used, zinc pyrithione, salicylic acid, selenium sulfide, and sulfur. Now Remedy has 1.8% salicylic acid, so it can be used to treat dandruff. And for seborrheic dermatitis, it has the same exact ingredients. But there's one ingredient that's missing, and that is ketoconazole. You might be like me and have been thinking, where is ketoconazole? It definitely can be used to treat dandruff. Like I have a ketoconazole shampoo. Well, I did a little digging. Ketoconazole was already approved as a drug to treat dandruff before the monographs were made. And the ingredients in the monograph go through a different type of regulatory pathway in the FDA than ketoconazole. And brands just need approval by the FDA to use ketoconazole in their product. Now keep that all in mind when we go into the ingredients because we're going to break that down a little bit more. In beauty products, there is a huge distinction between active and inactive ingredients because they tell you a lot about their role in the product. Active ingredients are doing a lot of the heavy work when it comes to the functions of a over-the-counter beauty product they, because they directly treat or target specific conditions. In Remedy's formula, salicylic acid is the active ingredient because it works to help exfoliate your scalp, helping with dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis, which is something that we learned through the FDA monograph. Now, ketoconazole is technically an active ingredient, and that's why we see ketoconazole dandruff shampoos. But Remedy has ketoconazole listed as an inactive ingredient. Now, why is that? I did take a couple FDA class in engineering school. I'm not an FDA expert or anything. This is just what I think happened. Now, I don't know what order this happened in, but I know that one of the first things that happened before this product was even made is Remedy asked the FDA to make a ketoconazole shampoo. Now, remember what I said earlier that the FDA didn't put ketoconazole in a monograph because it was already considered a prescription drug. And prescription drugs have to go through a different type of regulatory process in which brands basically have to ask the FDA to use it in a product. So I think first Remedy asked the FDA to use ketoconazole. As they were formulating the product, they were able to use salicylic acid as the active ingredient because the FDA says in the monograph that salicylic acid can treat dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. And because this is an over-counter drug, this went through a lot of clinical testing, which probably cost like probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. And since clinical testing was already happening with salicylic acid, as the active ingredient, they were probably able to basically sneak in ketoconazole because they already made the claim that salicylic acid is the main dandruff treating treatment. So I think it's okay that the ketoconazole was on the ingredients list as long as the product itself went through clinical testing. Now to break down the rest of our ingredients list, we have our cleansing agents. They remove dirt, oil, and buildup from your scalp. And then we have some conditioners. Now the surfactants or cleansing agents that they use is a little bit strong. So they use conditioning agents to kind of balance it out so that you still get an effective clean, but your hair is isn't like completely dry. Then we have humectants. We have that niacinamide that helps with your scalp and barrier repair and a bunch of antioxidants to help soothe your scalp. The rest of these are emulsifiers, product stabilizers, preservatives, chelators, and pH adjusters, which basically make sure that the product is stable and works correctly, has the correct shelf life, is the correct pH. If you got into this point in the video, please make sure you subscribe because it helps me create more videos like this one. I'm gonna be honest, I use Remedy three times and the first two times I did not like it, but the third time I really liked it. Now let's go through some mistakes you might be making if you're using Remedy for dandruff. The first mistake you might make is not using some type of pre-poo for the ends of your hair. Now if you remember when we went over the ingredients, I said that their surfactants are really strong. You definitely get a really great cleanse when using Remedy, but if your hair is like mine, your hair will be dry and tangled after using it. Third time I used it, I used a pre-poo and then detangled my hair with the pre-poo and I honestly didn't have any problems when using the shampoo. Another thing I've noticed about Kinokonosol shampoos is that they have a very 
thin viscosity. Now, viscosity is basically how thick a product is, and it's like liquid. And it's kind of like the same thing I experience when using Nizarol. So since it has such a low viscosity, it's kind of just like a liquid in your hand. So when you put the product in your hand and then rub your hands together and then try to distribute this, the product on your scalp, it doesn't distribute the product as well. And it kind of made my scalp and my hair feel really dry and almost uncomfortable the first and second times I used Remedy. But the third time I used it, I used it kind of how it indicates with the applicator and I applied it directly to my scalp, which is something I think Remedy intended you to do. I was really able to target areas that I tend to struggle more with dandruff. And because I was applying it directly to my scalp, there weren't parts of my hair that got more covered with the shampoo than my scalp did. So there wasn't really any uncomfortable parts of my hair or my scalp. Overall, I think Remedy did a really good job creating this product. And I think it's going to be your super popular, especially with those of us who have scalp conditions, because this has literally been my go-to using a ketoconazole shampoo and then using a salicylic acid shampoo whenever I wash my hair. And using Remedy has not only shortened my wash routine, but I only had to wash my hair once to get an effective clean with this. So this is definitely something else. Now, if you look on Remedy's website, there's actually a wait list for this product. I was lucky enough that Remedy sent it to me, but I'm interested to see as this product and this brand gains popularity, how other companies like the L'Oreal's or the Unilever's react to a product like this. And I'm kind of hoping that there'll be more products like this because this is probably one of the best dandruff shampoos I've tried ever. And look who joined us just in time for the closing. Please make sure you like and subscribe because it helps me create more educational videos like this one. And if you have any other products you want us to go over, make sure you put them down in the comments. As always, I love to learn with you and I can't wait to see what we do next. Thank you.